All right, this is Paul Solt. I wanna show you how to create six different custom buttons. We're gonna be using both the system and the custom button type. So there's two behaviors that we can really take advantage of here. The system buttons are gonna give us the default animations for the system. This is gonna change operating system to operating system. So as iOS gets updated, these might change a little bit. Now with custom buttons, you have full control over everything. That means you can write custom code to manage any animations or transitions as well as configuring what the normal image is and what the press state image or the selected or the highlighted, you have full control over them. So let's just take a run through. I'm just gonna click on these buttons here. So on the left, you can see that this fades in. It has a little animation. It's gonna fade out to a 0.15 opacity or so. Here we can see the default tint color. So this is gonna behave a slightly different. This is the default behavior you'll see when you click on a button in iOS. And now we can have a background image behind an image. So we can have two images stacked up and we get the behavior of the system button. So the background image is just a, a solid color. I, I didn't do anything fancy here. So you're just gonna see that. Now let's take a look at the custom buttons. Custom buttons, this is sort of the behavior that you're used to on most operating system. You click a button and it changes and it's usually darker. So it gets darker automatically. You don't have to do anything. That's just a single asset that can do that. Now, if you wanted to control that, you can have a a back sort of a highlighted state. So that's gonna be a different image. So in this case, I'm making it into this blue image. It's got a little bit of a, a gradient to it. And so you can sort of see how that changes. And then we can throw in the background image. And again, this is gonna behave different when we compare. So you can see the difference between these different buttons. Okay, let me show you how we can go ahead and create these buttons. So we're gonna start from scratch. We're gonna just drag out these buttons and I'm gonna create uh, basically a carbon copy below. So we don't need any text, I'll delete the text. Now our button, we can't really see it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select it here and we need to choose an image. Now to start, we're gonna create this one with the, the play button. And then I'm going to click on it and do command equals and that's gonna resize it to its native resolution, whatever that image asset's going to be. So you can resize it. If you hold shift, it'll maintain its aspect ratio. And if you do command equals, uh, let me turn on the keyboard shortcuts. Command equals will resize that to its native resolution. All right, so we can go ahead and test that, but before we do that, let's go ahead and, and continue customizing. So we set this background image. Let's duplicate this. I'll hold the Alt or the Option key, click and drag to create a, a carbon copy. Now, what I'll do here is instead of setting, so we have two options here, and I glossed over this really quick, but I'll just be flying through this. So if we set it for the image and press Enter, that's gonna basically look the same, but it's gonna have different behavior. And then the last one I wanna create, we'll do one more carbon copy of this one. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna set a background image. So let's just go with a, a background image. And I have a, a few options here. I think I'm just gonna go with the button square one. It's gonna be a simple background. It's an image and let's go ahead and test this. So these are, are going to be system buttons and we're gonna be configuring them all right, so we don't see the animation for all of them and we don't see sort of the behavior that we were expecting. Why is that? Well, when we were customizing these, you'll see that right here, this is the first one we did. This one says type system, but then we, when we click on this one, it says custom and this one, it says custom. So if we wanna get the behavior, what we need to do is we have to select our button. So you can hold shift, select both buttons and switch them back to system. Now you're gonna see that they change and they match the buttons that we see at the top and we can go ahead and run this again. We'll just click on these buttons and you can see that we get that nice animations and it sort of just fades in, fades out and does what we want and does the same thing as those two, sorry, those three buttons. All right, so that's customizing the system button. This gives you the behavior that's part of iOS 8. This can change though. All right, so next up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate one of these buttons. So let's duplicate this one. I'm gonna click on it and while I'm holding the alter option key and then I'm gonna let go down here. And once we do that, we're gonna switch this back to custom. So now let's do some custom buttons. So the default custom button, you can either have the image here or in the, the other place. And we can experiment to see if that's any different. Sometimes there's a little bit of different behaviors and you'll have to test it if Apple changes any of these behaviors with your button. So make sure you press enter, otherwise your button image can disappear when you're doing that. Let's run this real quick. And okay, so those two basically behave the same. What do we do here? 
Well, the thing I want to customize is have two different buttons. So normally when your designers are working in the user interface, you need to have a normal state and then sort of a press state. And so in iOS, we call that highlighted. And so what you need to do is select the button and then come up here and you'll see state config. You have these four options. So your artist can create four variations of your button for highlighted, selected, where it's like a checkbox type thing or disabled where the user cannot interact with it. We're just going to choose highlighted. And for this one, I have a, a variation of the play button that is going to be highlighted. So if I just type H for highlight and press enter, it's going to auto complete that. Now we're not going to see the difference. What you want to do to test that out is you're going to see that there's this setting right here where we can test highlighted. Super useful to see what's going on. You can also click on this one and do highlighted and you'll see what that's going to look like. So that's a quick way to test it without actually even running the app. You can just hit that checkbox, or if you want to see what it looks selected and you have another image, you can see what that's going to look like. All right, so the last button is just fully customizing both the foreground image and the background image. And all we need to do here is give it a button background image. So I have a few to choose. We'll go with the button square one again. And uh, you can see I, I'm in the, uh, the highlighted state here. So it's only going to appear for that state. So I don't really want this in the highlight state. What I want is I want to switch back to the default state for the button that we just copied. And we're going to add the background here. This way it's available in both the, the normal and the highlighted state. If you wanted to control that, you can provide two different assets for that as well. Uh, the more assets you provide, the more you have to manage and sort of work with your artist. So if we click on these, this is the default button behavior you get with a an image button. Here is using a custom image like I had demoed at the top. And then this last one is where we are going to just flip flop, use a, a similar background, but it's not going to fade out like the one that we did up top. So these are going to have two different behaviors. These are, are different behaviors. You're going to have animation with the system buttons. And that's how you can customize six different button styles using both the system style for a UI button as well as the custom style for a UI button. All right, so if this was helpful, like the video. And then if you want to hear more tips, let me know. Find me on Twitter or just comment below on the video. And if you're interested, I am selling a, a game course. I've got a 50% discount that will get you up and running. You're going to learn tips like this on how to customize your UI for your games as well as working with Sprite Kit so that you can make really cool 2D games. And it's really easy to get started. I've had a ton of students go through it and they're already working on some amazing games. So sign up if you want. Otherwise, in the next video, what I'm gonna show you is how we can take this to the next level. What we're gonna do are some crazy resizable buttons. So let's see what that looks like. We're gonna see something like this and you'll have to jump into the next video to see how to create these crazy buttons. All right, see you in the next video.